Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Another video looking at pillow corners. Yeah, just what everybody's been waiting for a bit. This is my Mark IV version of pillow corners. I think Mark III went online about a week ago. Um, I wasn't intending to do another video on this. It's just I was messing around trying to turn this into like a, a pillowed form generator, pillowed surface generator using global variables today and I kind of thought hey that's not quite you know good enough in a particular area like here and so I went down the rabbit hole again the pillowed surface rabbit hole um, and have come up with this one I'm not going to talk too much about the global variables thing um, it's just easier than diving into sketches to change things but what I will do is go and have a look uh, at what I've changed to create this version. If I jump over to where I got to the other day in this file, you can see I have one, two, three, four surfaces making up the corner. Except this surface here terminates basically one of the boundaries is the outside corner. So when this corner gets smaller, you do end up reading some pinching or a sharp sort of curvature change along this boundary. So today I was messing around with this form and decided instead of having this line here carry through to this point here, uh, basically make a plane perpendicular to the spline with the outside edge here and cut that off square and then create another surface in here. And the trick is with the surface here uh, is to not use explicit boundaries uh, one two three here because we have line corner line because if you do that you just end up reintroducing these sort of punch lines in here so what i've done instead is create another boundary so this surface actually the outside boundary is this spline here so what does that mean that means if i look and roll back to that surface so you can see there that means that that surface, when you extend it, that surface when you extend it, dips below like your explicit boundary. You think, oh, okay, maybe that's not ideal. But if you have a look on the back of a, I think it was 2000, but a 2011, 2012 iMac here, uh, and in the corner of theirs, there you go, you can see, so this is the, iMac I'm talking about, you can see how this, this corner here, it dips down then back out again. I've got the same thing going on here, so I figure that's to remove a bit of flattening that must happen around this edge. So you dis disassociate the effect of that explicit edge on the surface here. So if I measure that dip 2.86, 3, so what's that? 0.14, so it's not much really. And also with that surface, the spline on the outside that controls it, you can, for example, push that corner out more, which reduces the effect of the dip. But I think the main thing is that if we have a look at the curvature, even though curvature graph in um, SolidWorks is ropey anyway, because you get these shading artifacts from the, the mesh, I don't have any pinching through here, and if I turn on my zebra, have a look, you know, there's nothing there for that to get a tangent break or a, a funny read across there anyway, because the surface is one, and we've disassociated the boundary of the surface with this edge, with the resultant being that that dips down. So I think generally, all in all, my version 4, this is not too bad. So that's with quite a sharp corner. That's with 1.5 millimeters. If I make that 3 millimeters, an update. You know, it looks pretty good. Before I did this, I had this corner sharp, and I, I, I definitely could read something through here, so I'm quite happy with the result of this.
what else have I changed? Um, good question. I have changed because I was going to set this up as I set it up for the uh, equations. I changed my main corner setup, which if you have seen the version three mark three, I've got a degree seven spline with eight CVs with one two three four and one two three four CVs all lined up collinear to the vertical and horizontal uh, sides. And the main difference now is I've made an equation with a multiplier in each of these links for the CV so that when I change the main radius uh, in my equations, the relationship sort of between this circle and the spline remain the same. So if the corner gets bigger, it sort of just touches the circle at the midpoint there as it does this uh, for, for an R3 corner. Not an R3 corner, obviously, it's a spline, but and you can see it's got a setback of 4.56, and again, that's, that is controlled with the ratio as well. And I've done that in a few places, just so uh, when I change the dimension in my equations, like for this corner as well, things update. Also for this, um, for the main blend shape here. I've just made each of the one, two, three, four spline control polygons equal length. So if I change the pillow height, that, that curvature sort of doesn't get a little sharp kick on the end or anything. So yeah, I'll just change the, um, I'll change the uh, pillow height and then I might wrap this up, make it a short video tonight. Okay, so I've got pillow height, one millimeter. So if I made that 1.5 and then rebuild. That sort of all rebuilds quite well. Starting to get a, get a bit of a, a feel like the back of an old Nokia uh, window smartphone I used to have with quite quite a pinched corner on it. But I'll put this file online if anybody wants to pick it apart. So there you have it, Mark IV. The load surface with corner. So hopefully that's the last time I feel inclined to have a crack at this. I think I've got it fairly well covered there. No doubt there's a better way. If anybody has got a better way, then give us a yell in the comments. Um, I'm always interested in having a look at how other people build stuff. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. If you find this useful, then uh, please consider subscribing. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. See you next time.